Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're looking at a 1968-69 Gibson SG standard that has just been modified crazily. There's a lot to go over here, so let's just get into it. So this is a late 60s SG. They're not as desirable as the earlier 60s or the mid 60s. So the fact that this one's been all chopped up and everything, it's not quite as bad as it could have been. Though not being as expensive as the earlier ones, these are some of the most iconic SGs in my opinion, because you think of people like Angus Young, and this style of SG was also used in that classic movie, School of Rock. But as you can tell, th 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 there's been a lot of things going on here. We've got an extra knob right here, we've got an extra little toggle there, we've got something going on here. Yeah, so this guitar used to look like this. And now we've got this. <laughs> what happened? Okay, so first off, let's discuss what's happened right here. These screw holes are left over from the original Vibrola unit that used to be on here. They look super cool, don't they? But underneath there, if you want to convert this into a stop bar tailpiece, you can't because the routing is not there. So somebody got creative and instead of installing a tailpiece like most people would do, They've turned it into a Telecaster by doing a string through design. So you can see here on the back that they just routed straight through the body in six locations. Not exactly in the most straight orientation, but yeah, just like a hardtail Strat or a Telecaster. I honestly like string through styled guitars. And in fact, if you're interested in a string through SG, you can check out my review of the SGZ, which was a remake of the original SG90 double, which some of those can also be string through. But moving on here, let's go to our controls. Something that is very common to happen on these old SGs is they'll develop cracks. You can see that there's a little bit of a crack forming right there by the output jack, and that's because there's not a lot of wood in this area because they have to route it out the back and put the controls there. It's issues like these is probably why the SGs actually switched to a top routing system for a little bit in the early 70s. So I can only assume that this black plastic or whatever is over top of that is just making it so that the wood is secure enough in order to mount the knob. Because I mean, it seems like a whole bunch of stuff has potentially happened right there and there's some finished touch up. But then we have a tiny little switch right here and our regular three-way toggle. Now, according to the seller's listing, if I'm reading it correctly, this is actually a kill switch. So I'm not sure if it's a three position or two position just on and off, but that can definitely be a handy feature for some people. But what, what, what's going on right here? This is the reason why I tell you guys, if you ever buy an old SG, make sure you check underneath the pick guard because those pick guards can hide some very deadly sins. But honestly, I love it when people do these modifications because you really can throw a bunch of stuff on an SG just by doing some additional routing underneath here. And what the listing is saying that this little knob is, it is a master volume. So if you have a kill switch right here and a master master volume that takes priority over these controls, because apparently these are still two volumes, two tones, just in case you want to roll one of them down and not all of them. I feel like they could have done so much more with all this stuff. That little dinky switch right here reminds me of the Zappa SG. I think his uses something very similar to that. You can check out this review and demo of that guitar. But from this angle, we can see the strap buttons have been replaced with something modern. We no longer have the cool covers. For me, on these guys, it's all about the vibrato, it's about the covers. This really does look super stripped down like a parts guitar. But at the same time, it looks pretty raw. But that fretboard's looking beautiful. You've got some nice figuring within those inlays. And it would just be regular rosewood at this point in time. But what's going on up here? This is a very common thing that happens in like the late 60s. We're talking 68, 69. The Gibson logo will just flake off. This is not somebody trying to tape over the Gibson logo. <laughs> it, it just comes off. I don't know why it happens like that in this particular year, but I had a Les Paul professional that had the exact same thing going on and you see it all the time on these used listings. So it's kind of a buzzkill not having the Gibson logo if you're gonna have a sweet vintage SG. But if all these other modifications and the missing logo weren't bad enough, look what's happened to this poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a headstock break where they've damaged the front veneer. They had to replace the truss rod cover. And now let's look at the back. Ooh, the damage that has been done. So at least it seems to have been repaired okay. What they've done here is they've glued it back together and then they routed out this channel right here and put a spline. That's a very common way for people to professionally repair these Gibson guitars. There's some guys that are like super against it. You don't have to spline everything, but I think a proper splining job looks great. 
I personally prefer it when they do two blocks instead of one, but this could look a lot better with just some finished touch up work. It was probably somebody that just needed it fixed, but they didn't necessarily care about the cosmetics because you can definitely touch that up to make it look nearly invisible. Well, if you go for a solid finish like this. And on top of that, we also have Schaller tuners on here, so that tells you most of these modifications were likely done in the 70s. So what other sins could possibly be on this guitar? It's got the typical heel crack. <laughs> That's the Achilles heel, ha ha ha, of the 60s SGs. They always break right here. But what I love, look at that figuring within the mahogany body. That's really cool. But it's definitely split right here. You've got the typical split lines right there. And if you look around the other edges, usually you see them right here as well. I'll never forget that day I unboxed that SG Custom and the neck just snapped off of it. You could lift it up. That was such a weird feeling. Ever since having that happen to me, I cannot pick up an SG the same way again. I'm always super careful with those things. So it'd be a fun guitar for somebody, that's for sure. They're saying the pickups in it is a neck PAF reissue, so probably like a 57 classic, and we have a Duncan Slash humbucker in the bridge. So it doesn't even have the vintage goodness, so this is just strictly a player's guitar for somebody who wants to say they own a vintage SG. So what is our price on this guy? $2,750. So remember, double neck repairs, all replaced parts, drilled through the body. Let's take a look. So an original one in very good condition from a reputable dealer that charges top dollar, six and a half thousand. Looks like our price guide is saying anywhere between 25 to 55. See, here's a later 1970. These aren't quite as desirable, but you can see they switched over how they did the inlay so it wouldn't flake off anymore. And this one's got replaced pickups as well. So that's two and a half. Let's compare it to this one real quick because this is only $3,000, so just a little bit more. You kind of get a chewed up finish, but that has a certain vibe to it, and you still get the original vibrato. Those things can sell for a good amount of money if you don't want it. Geez, somebody played that thing like crazy. You know, I'm kind of digging that one. Has it had any breaks, cracks, or repairs? Yeah, we got the split right there, just like the other one. Typical cracks in that area. And here you can see what the logo looks like if it hasn't flaked off yet. Nice, this one has the original patent number pickups. I'm not seeing where he mentions any repairs though. How long has this one been listed for? Oh, a day. Well, this one might actually be a deal. Am I gonna have to buy something? I'm pretty sure those Grovers are worth a little bit of money because of the patent pending on them. Those are nice pickups. I've had them in flying V's. Oh, maybe this became a shopping episode. So that's a slightly later case, I think. So it probably sat around in a store for a while. Is this guy a dealer? I don't know. I think he's just a guy that's selling stuff. So that means it could potentially be a good deal. And he's selling uh, is it an SG Junior. That seems to be fairly priced as well. Yeah. Even the vintage price guide is saying this is worth between 36 to 48 in clean condition. So that, this is definitely a deal right here. Okay, so I made an offer on it. I mean, feel free to steal it from me if you want to. I don't really know the market too much, but all those numbers seem to make sense. I dig the wear and tear. A few cracks are kind of scaring me on this one, but I've never had a vintage SG before, so who knows? Maybe. But in case you want something a little bit crazier, there's always this one. And this is offered by SS1121. They actually have another guitar I'm going to be featuring in a day or two, but since this is kind of a really late night upload, I figured I would go ahead and do this one first. So for our playing demo today, let's go ahead and check out a 69 SG standard. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
The only question left, would you rock a badly beaten, chopped up SG or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.